Hey guys, back with another video for you today. I've got a guest in the studio. It's Sarah Baker. Hi. So we are doing a two-parter here. We're going to talk about aldehydes in fragrances. This is part one and the featuring more classical feminine aldehydic fragrances. And stay tuned for a part two of more modern aldehydic fragrances or fragrances featuring aldehydes. So if you're curious to learn about aldehydes, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday we're talking about aldehydes and fragrances. Are you a fan? Are you a fan? Um, I am a fan. <laughs> I, I'm I, kind of. Kind, kind of? of. Yeah. I like aldehydes. I don't know if I love aldehydic fragrances. Interesting. So typically I feel like aldehydes or when people see aldehydes and fragrances, they associate them with classic fragrances or fragrances that smell like grandma or fragrances that are feminine targeted. Is this true? Because today what we're talking about are feminine fragrances that feature aldehydes. Not a lot of male fragrances from the classic era did feature aldehydic fragrances. So is it is usually associated with uh, feminine fragrances? Well, the very first famous aldehydic fragrance was Chanel Number no. Five, which I would say is a feminine fragrance mm -hmm. typically. Okay. Um, and Coco Chanel wanted something that smelled like a woman and didn't smell like flowers, and so that was the brief that she gave Ernest Beau when he was making Chanel Number no. Five, and he came back with some modifications, um, which basically means different variants for her to try. And um, one of them was what we now know as Chanel number no. five. It's the fifth one, right? <clears throat> yes, I believe it was the fifth modification. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what happened was legend has it that um, he accidentally put too much aldehydes in Chanel number no. five. It was a complete accident. He did not intend for that to happen. It was his assistant that did it or something like that. Interesting. But she loved it. So it became Chanel number no. five. Okay. So um, I like the smell of aldehydes when they go into the kind of Coca-Cola-esque vibe or into the soapy direction. They always have a very clean uh, vibe about them. So if she was trying to recreate a smell for women that didn't, that smelled more like women rather than flowers, I'm assuming the aldehydes that are in Chanel number no. five are not taken from uh, flowers because you can make aldehydes or take aldehydes from most living ingredients like fruits, plants, vegetables, maybe yeah, flowers. Absolutely. Is this true? So aldehydes um, are in, they're natural actually. They're in most natural things. They contain aldehydes such as orange rind and cinnamon and a lot of flowers, a lot of fruits, a lot of bugs, a lot of things in the natural world contain aldehydes. Do we contain aldehydes? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't use my aldehydes, please. <laughs> um, so some, basically, probably in all perfumes, there are aldehydes, okay. um, but it doesn't necessarily make it an aldehydic fragrance. I see. So um, what happened in Chanel number no. five was there was a bouquet of aldehydes, which was basically C10, C11, and C12. Those are the chemical names for the aldehydes that are used. Okay. And um, it became so popular to use those that it became a little bit confusing. What is an aldehyde? Because um, it definitely creates a sort, certain fizziness, but it it doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, a specific smell. It's hard to describe it, yeah. basically. To me, when I smell an aldehydic fragrance and it's overloaded with aldehydes, it does tickle my nose. So it's fizzy. Just it's just, yeah, it's fizzy. Like just imagine when you open up a can of Coke or something and those bubbles and sparkles, that's how aldehydes actually, um, you know, wear mm -hmm. or smell to me. So champagne-y kind of like qualities for me. Yeah, um, but you know, I mean, definitely like you can recreate a lot of things such as cinnamon or um, soap, a soap, soapy sort of a fragrance could be considered aldehydic fragrance. Because mm -hmm. I, like, I like some aldehydes that really go into the clean soapy direction. But let's go ahead and get started with some fragrances. We've got 11 total fragrances. One of them as a bonus, we have a vintage bottle that I just recently picked up, sort of a vintage bottle, but we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to jump around with dates. This is the first fragrance we're talking about from the house of YSL. It's a Rive Gauche, this one right here. 
This is a fragrance that has a lot of meaning to me. Uh, when I was a little kid, my mom wore it, and I remember this bottle on her dresser, and I'd see it visually. It's be beautiful because everything is white, and it stands against a white wall and things like that. But this features notes of aldehydes with rose, oak moss, vetiver, musk, iris, geranium. There's green notes, lily of the valley, ylang ylang, sandalwood, and tonka. Launched in 71. Yes, and I remember my mom wearing this in the mid-70s. Mm. Shall we have a sniff? I own I own this one as well, and yeah. it's really lovely. Yeah, yeah, I like this. I like this YSL. It's such yeah. a classic. I'm glad they haven't discontinued this one yet, since it is pretty old. But they did get rid of the, the male Reef Gauche, which was launched in 2000s. But this seems watered down. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what the other one smells like. This is the only one I've ever smelled. But... um. I remember the advertisements and they're very classic, very 80s advertisements. Mm. No, I do get the very faint touches of aldehydes here. I don't get that like a uh, sparkle in my nose. And I feel like there's lots of woods here, some floral touches. And it doesn't really stand out too much, sadly, mm. this current formulation. It's pretty watered down. Like sadly. it's not something I would reach for necessarily. But mm. you have it just for learning about the fragrance. Yeah, I used to wear it, but I just, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily do it anymore because it's just a little bit disappearing. Yeah, I guess. It's, it's gone. Yeah. Some of the fragrances we're going to talk about today are very, very faint. Uh, they don't last too long. But the next fragrance we're going to talk about is from the house of Hermes. This is Kalesh in the Eau de Toilette concentration. They have a parfum version of this too, which is absolutely amazing. But this, I think, version compared to the uh, the YSL, I think they've kept pretty nice. It does mm. smell really nicely beautiful with uh, this creamy sandalwood under there, some uh, powdery touches of iris, tropical flowers, and of course the typical rose, neroli, vetiver, and things like that, woods. What do you think? I'd like the iris to kind of stand out a little bit more in this one, but um, it, it is really gorgeous. It's yeah. a beautiful perfume. Yeah. Classic. Very classic. Yeah, this yeah. one launched in 61. Whereas the YSL launched in 71. So they've been making aldehydic fragrances for the ladies since the early 1900s. But it's kind of slowed down, I think. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, a lot of people are still, like I said, using aldehydes in fragrances because you can recreate certain things like apple or melon or grass or, you know, certain. So they're actually used in probably every single perfume. To me, these fragrances that we're talking about today also aldehydically do smell similar but when you wear them they're not obviously the same fragrances but a lot of uh, aldehydic fragrances that are featured now don't smell like these these have a very classic classic vibe about them mm -hmm. but this is chanel number no. five launched in uh, 1921 so it's certainly a hundred plus years old i think it's the a famous chanel number no. five i think it's pleasant mm. I used to wear this a lot, actually. You did? My mother used to wear it as well. Whenever she went out, this was her like going out fragrance in the 80s. Mm. There is a film called Coco and Igor. It's about Coco Chanel and um, her boyfriend, Igor Stravinsky. And in that film, they do have a small subplot of her working on her perfumes, if you guys uh, want to catch that. And do that. they talk about number five? They do. Yeah. But this one, this one, actually, if you're a fan of number five, number 22 is even better. It's mm. so, so good. I really like it. This is from the Less Exclusives collection, which actually just raised prices, uh, unfortunately. But wow, this is like mm -hmm. amazing. So good in the aldehydic territory. It's beefy. It's strong. A bit of fruitiness. Lots of white flowers. Some warm thunder there. I feel like I get vanilla. I definitely am getting the neroli. Like, I think that that is something that is really making this an exciting fragrance for me. That's hmm. the sort of a fruitiness. Now, why is it that we think this one is much better than number five? Because number five seems pretty mass. And mm -hmm. even though number 22 and number five kind of have similarities, I much prefer number 22 for its density. Yeah, it seems like it has a stronger base. It's slightly sweeter and it's slightly fruitier. Very robust, actually. If you love number five, definitely check out number 22. Definitely. And it came out a year after number five uh, initially. So the versions that were launched in 1921 and 22 were Parfum concentrations. And I just uh, we just showed you both Eau de Parfum concentration number five and number 22. All right, next up, we have a fragrance created by Jean-Claude Elena called First for the house of Van Cleef and Arpel. 
This is probably one of the very first creations by Jean-Claude Elena, and it is actually signed by Jean-Claude Elena. When I met him uh, earlier this year, I was grateful to just take that bottle. I actually took two bottles, a friend's bottle and my bottle, to get Jean-Claude Elena to That's sign really cool. first. He has a great autograph. Yeah. But this is aldehydes with narcissus, hyacinth, civet, oak moss, lily of the valley, carnation, honey, black currant, ylang ylang, orris, tuberose, sandalwood, amber, musk. This to me is more of a green floral aldehydic fragrance. Do yeah. you agree? Yeah, it's definitely very aldehydic. It's, it's to me, I'm getting soapiness. And I think that um, there's something that should be said about the soapy quality to aldehydes. And the reason that we think that they smell soapy is because a lot of soaps were fragranced with aldehydes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I like that idea. But this to me, I think the standout notes in addition to the aldehydes, because there's green floral notes in here, Narcissus, Hyacinth, and Lily of the Valley really stand out here. For me, that is amazing. It smells mm -hmm. great. To this day, I think that's still a very popular fragrance for Van Cleef and Arpel. Mm -hmm. And out of their signature line fragrances, they don't have a lot left. That's pretty much it here selling in the States. But moving on to Estee Lauder's Estee, created by the wonderful perfumer Bernard Chant. I think he created this one. Unfortunately... And he's one of your favorite perfumers. He's definitely one of my favorite perfumers. He's created a lot of Estee Lauder, a lot of uh, Aramis fragrances. Uh, but unfortunately, this formulation is a little bad. On yeah. skin, this is much better than on the paper, sadly. We've found we've found that we're kind of, it's a little lackluster. Like, it's not really giving what it, it, these other ones are. Well, the Estee Lauder is better than the next one that's coming. It's The other <laughs> one's very lackluster. But uh, with the Estee Lauder, it's full of aldehydes with honey. There's oak moss, coriander. There also has lily, lily valley, sandalwood. A lot of typical notes in this, uh, but uh, we feel like it needs a little oomphing up for some reason, sadly. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the market for that, uh, be cautioned. But Try before you buy. Try before you buy. But this next one is even worse. It's Calandra <laughs> from uh, Paco Rabanne. I bought a tester bottle. Obviously, it doesn't come with a cap. And this is really, really faint. But you know what? Uh, the Calandra is launched in 69. I forgot to mention the date of uh, Estee Lauder. It was 1968. 1968. So these are back to back. 1969. So uh, that was in back then to have that kind of maybe slightly lighter, fizzier. Yeah. Not doing very much, really. I guess a lot it of... It does more on the skin, though, as we did. Yeah, notice. both of these do much better on the skin. We tested them out with the Estee Lauder being stronger than the Cal uh, Calandra from uh, Paco Rabanne on skin. Uh, I think there's just a really, really bad formulation with the Paco Rabanne, but I guess in the heyday, I think it was pretty... They got away with it. Popular with... Maybe. The, yeah. It's, it's well, still I don't in production. Think it, I don't, yeah, that's, that's a recent purchase, okay. but I feel like it was a lot more robust back then uh, in comparison to today. Moving on to a much newer fragrance, once again created by Jean-Claude Elena. This is uh, Dia Woman from Amouage, launched in 2002. Now, this one, if we're talking about faint fragrances with uh, Paco Rabanne and Estee Lauder, this one's very robust and intense. Mm. It does remind me of his first because he created both of them. But uh, this is definitely more in line with the Amouage style, I think. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? It is definitely a feminine fragrance, I'd say. It has like a powderiness to it. I guess that's created from the orris that I'm seeing is in the notes. Yeah, it's, it's got floral notes. It's a white musk with cyclamen, rose, heliotrope, violet leaves, sage, orris root, santal or sandalwood, incense, orris root. It's beautiful. It's a really, really beautiful aldehydic fragrance, uh, but um, pricey also. Mm. Don't you think? Oh, well, I don't know how much it costs. It's probably $350, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay> <laughs> if, unless you can get it yeah. at the discounters. But yeah, still very robust, which is very like full-bodied fragrance. So what do you think so far is the best one out of all of these? Well, so far, I feel like Chanel 22 is really doing the most. Like it, it is definitely the more versatile, more interesting, and maybe more contemporary, weirdly. Weirdly. That is, it's like almost 100 years old. Yeah, it smells great, guys. Check that one out. Sadly, the, the price hike, unfortunately with that uh, just happened. But let's move on to Youp Leban. I Le featured this in a lot of different uh, videos. It's a great cheapy. It does remind me a little bit of what we do in Paris, a secret by a lab on fire. Uh, but this stuff is delicious. It's a bit gourmand, mm. vanillic, ambery, woody, yeah. and also aldehydic. 
So it does have a bit of a fizzy vibe. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'd say it's an aldehydic, aldehydic perfume. But it definitely is also, um, yeah. like Chanel 22, it's kind of doing a lot more than just being an aldehydic perfume. Like it has a lot more depth to it. Yeah, the substance, yeah. And it's amazing that it's so inexpensive. $30. I really love this. I wear this because, you know, what we do in Paris is secret. You know that one? From yeah. A Lab on Fire? I do. I really love that one. This is not identical to that, but it does remind or hint at it. And so, yeah, it has this kind of a very light, airy fizziness along with all the warm notes and things like that. Well, that's one of the things that Aldehydes does. It makes things a lot lighter, you know, so even like a floral fragrance, it will just bring air into it so that it's not so heavy. So all of these perfumes are really light. Yeah, they do wear pretty light, but the next one uh, is absolutely amazing. Uh, this is the Eau de Toilette version of Jean Couturier's Coriander, which is actually a sheeper fragrance, but utilizes aldehydes along with all the typical sheeper notes like oak moss and uh, geranium and rose and patchouli and bergamot and uh, what else do they have typically? Labdanum and things like that. Really great. It's very, very great. It's very, it's light though, unfortunately, but still the smell in comparison to the Calandra, this one seems like the smell is kept, whereas uh, the Calandra is so faint you can hardly smell anything. Mm -hmm. And even though this has coriander as well, I'm not really picking up the coriander. It's a I spice. I am not picking up the coriander. Like, the coriander is one of those love-hate things. So it's, um, you know, a lot of people don't like the smell of coriander. Well, here's the thing. I love the smell of the seeds, but I hate the smell of the actual... Of the leaf, you don't want that. It's in your got food, a right? weird. Well, I've gotten used to it, but when I was young, into in, in my twenties, mm -hmm. I couldn't smell. I couldn't. I hated the smell of cilantro mm -hmm. or yeah. coriander. Yeah, cilantro, <laughs> coriander. So I guess when coriander is used in perfumery, they're not using. It's not that leafy smell. No, Maybe it's the actual it's seeds. I seed. think. Yeah, yeah, the seeds smell so beautiful. Actually, so beautiful. It could be an aldehyde. For it, all we know, I think they do make <laughs> aldehydes from coriander. Sure. I think they do. Yeah. Yeah. And then last but not least, we have a fragrance in its current formulation from 2019 by Grey Cabochard. So this is more of a leather fragrance. Mm. Leather Sheepra is what I should say, uh, but um, aldehydic at the same time. But this smells really good. I love it. This is like 25 bucks online. Amazing. <laughs> and a cute little bottle, feminine. Mm -hmm. Very classic. And this is also something that... Uh, what's her, uh, Ducita tells me that one of her fragrances, Le Siage Blanc, was kind of uh, maybe not inspired by this particular fragrance, but kind of is has a similar style. And I could see that. It's got greenness. It's got a bit of galbanum in there. Lots of aldehydes with oak moss and the leather, sage, patchouli. That's really good. Yeah, I really, really like this. And it's definitely... I love the cute, romantic little kind of bow that it has going on. And it definitely has that sort of romance in the fragrance. It's it's like toying with leather, toying with aldeh aldehyde. So, you know, it might even venture towards like a unisex. What do you think? Well, Le Siage Blanc is unisex. This is ladies targeted. So, right. I don't know. Leather fragrances to me are very masculine leaning. So, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. That stuff is good. Yeah, it's really good. So that's all we have for you today in the classic list of um, aldehydic fragrances. And you know, I've been forgetting to tell you the dates of launch, but the Cabochard launched in 59. The that's Jean fun. Couturier, yeah, the Jean Couturier, that one's 59. The Jean Couturier Coriander was from 73. And then the Le Ban by Youp is from 1989. Very 80s. Yeah, that 80s, bottle is 90s, very yeah. Shoulder pads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this video about uh, aldehydic fragrances, classic ones. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Other otherwise, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. And this is also Sarah. If you follow her on House of Sarah Baker on Instagram, you can do that as yeah. well. Then stay tuned. We have a bonus option after the outro. So we have a bonus fragrance. I just recently picked up a friend was getting rid of a fragrance and I thought, you know what? They don't make this fragrance in this bottle anymore. This is Caron's Infini. It's a vintage one, but it's not the vintage vintage that came out in 1970. I think this is more of like the early 2000s bottle. And this is uh, very robust for an aldehydic fragrance. It's oh, yeah. a, a bit animalic as well. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. 
I don't know if you guys know this uh, fragrance. I don't know if you guys know the brand. It's gone through some changes, and this is still selling, but it's currently in a different bottle. But very, very aldehydic. Very warm under there as well. So this is the um, vintage version? Yeah, but not the original vintage. This is like from 20 years ago, maybe 25 okay. years ago. But a great scent. Mm -hmm. Really wonderful aldehydic yeah. fragrance. What do you think? I love it. Yeah. Do you have an aldehydic fragrance in your collection? Um, we use aldehydes. Like I said, there's a lot of fragrances that have aldehydes in them but none of them would be able to be classified as aldehydic. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for part two of this video or another video tomorrow. Have a good one. Goodbye.